This morning we'll look at Matthew chapter 10 verses 16 to 23 as we consider Jesus' words that we will face persecution as Christians like sheep among wolves, but he goes with us in order to help us stand firm in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours this day from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text today is actually the gospel lesson as a whole, but let me read just a little part of it, verse 22, to refresh us on the point that we'll be emphasizing today. Jesus is saying, you will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So far the text this morning. You know, our Lutheran liturgy is really unique in appointing today as the festival of the Reformation. And the reason it's unique is because I believe that we Lutherans are the only ones who observe the event in which God in, it came into human history and changed the course of world events to bring his gospel to life once again. You know, the Reformation was already being celebrated in the year 1528. <laughs> Eleven years after Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the doors of the Castle Church in Wittenberg. It was a good opportunity to do so because the first Bible in the common language of the people, the first Bible translation that was not in Latin, the German Bible, had been translated at that time and Luther had had it published. The festival of the Reformation would come later and stronger as time went in, went along, and the Lutherans became more and more predominant. And now, of course, Lutheranism in its various forms is the largest Protestant denomination in the world today. But we're not here to talk about the glories of Lutheranism or the glorified Martin Luther when we celebrate the festival of the Reformation. We are here to remember God's actions in the past and to give great glory to Him for bringing to light once again the central truth of the Holy Scriptures. That God, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, has saved us from the works of the law. So that we are not going to heaven by merit, as we hear St. Paul talking about in his epistle today, not by the works of the law, but by the trust that embraces the redeeming work of Christ on the cross, where he died for the sins of the world. And we only know that because of Scripture, alone. The watchwords of the Reformation to remind us of the central teaching of God's Word in the Old and New Testament that it is by grace through faith, as Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2. So, just as Baptists don't worship baptism, just as Presbyterians don't worship the Presbytery, Lutherans don't worship Martin Luther. But like the word Christian, which was intended as an insult to those who believed and followed Jesus in the first century, the term Lutheran was intended as an insult to those who believed in the central teaching of Christ. And so, the name just stuck. And we turned the word into a victory word, a victorious word. As Christian became the great call of people to God in Christ, so Luther became the call to those who would believe the central teaching of Christianity, grace through faith in Jesus. So, 
Martin Luther. What was that all about, I wonder? Was he any different than any of us? No, not really. Just an ordinary man living a Christian life, much like all of the people that we read about in the scriptures and all of the people that have followed through the book of Acts and all the way to today, living by the word of God, trusting in Christ, and when the time comes, standing firm on that word. What was remarkable were the circumstances in history that brought that all about. There was no intention, you see, to change anything or to destroy the Western church. It was simply an attempt to get back to the Word, to get into the heart of the Gospel once again, to proclaim the centrality of Christ in our Christian life. And the little words that were put, in, were put on a document suddenly lit a firestorm. A firestorm that was entirely unexpected. A firestorm that would sweep through Europe and bring Martin Luther to the imperial meeting in the city of Borges, where he would stand before the emperor the cardinals of the church, the rulers of the Germanic kingdoms, and the city leaders of the important cities. And there before him, the books that he had written. And the challenge, will you recant? Will you take everything that you have written about Christ away and deny it. Well, how could he do that? Some of his writings were simply the reaffirmation of Christian teachings throughout the years. Some of his writings were devotional. Some of his writings elevated Christ in the doctrine of justification by faith. He asked for a day to consider it. And that night he prayed. What should he do? You can imagine the tremendous pressure he was under. You can imagine the next morning as beads of sweat on his brow formed. And in his mind he wondered if he was about to die for his faith. And what did he say? They demanded a simple, plain answer. I cannot recant. He tells us it's not safe to go against conscience. That unless he is convinced by the scripture itself, simple reason, he will not take it back. And then he says, God help me. Amen. Here he stands. What else can he do? By the mercy and grace of God, in the presence of the Spirit of God working through the Holy Word, as He has through the centuries and will continue until the end of time. God, in His mercy and grace, works on the hearts of believers, brings us to faith, and keeps us in faith. And Jesus says in the Gospel today, that you will stand before kings and governors. And that when you do, you will be there to witness to your faith. He tells us that persecution will come. But when it does, stand firm. We have examples throughout the years and already in the scripture of people standing firm on the word of God. People who would not budge. Daniel in our Old Testament lesson today is one of those examples who prayed in his window toward Jerusalem. Who lifted up and worshipped the God of Israel. Who would not be intimidated. 
who would not be forced to stop worshiping, who would not give in to an illegitimate law and to the pride of a king. And because of that, he was thrown into a den of ravenous lions. But God was with him. He stood firm. And by a miracle, an angel of the Lord <coughs> shut the mouths of the lions. And in the morning, he was untouched. Now, Paul Harvey sometimes says, the rest of the story. And you and I know the rest of that story. Those deceitful and wicked rulers who had tricked the king into doing this so that Daniel would be put to death were themselves thrown into the lion's den along with their families. And God unstopped the mouths of the lions. God is with us. Wherever we go in this world, whatever we do in this world, God is with us. Now, we live in a beautiful country. A country established by Christians for the freedom to, re to worship God, religious freedom, and self-determination. And for 200 years, our country had remained strong. <coughs> Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. But it was about probably 60 years ago now when things began to change. And if you look at current events, what do you see? Well, the most notable thing of recent note is a mayor in the state of Texas who demands from pastors their sermons on homosexuality in order to intimidate them because of a position that she holds. Were they silenced? In fact, just the opposite. Perhaps you, like I, signed a petition that went to the city and pastors across the country sent in their servants to this lady. Standing on the faith that God had given them, confessing and testifying to the word of God and Christ's love in love and gospel. We may be asked at times in our lives, even in this nation, to do the very same things. Perhaps it won't be so obvious, it might be quite subtle, in the pagan culture that has overtaken us and the immorality that is rampant around us, people today who may call themselves Christians have never read the Bible, many of them, and have never darkened the door of a church. So is it any wonder that they would fall prey to the wiles of Satan? Is it any wonder that they would become indoctrinated in a liberal mindset that is intolerant of any view that is not liberal? Is it any wonder we hear in our workplaces and in our schools and in our shopping centers, you don't believe in the Bible, do you? Oh, you really don't believe that's wrong, do you? You don't go to church on Sunday, do you? Again and again and again, in subtle ways, you and I are called upon to witness to our faith, to stand firm on the Lord Jesus Christ and His work. Now, we have to be honest and remind ourselves that on our own, we simply cannot do it. If it were up to us to find the strength within ourselves, we would crumble every time due to the peer pressure, the political pressure, the social pressure that is growing and enormous today to deny Christ. But it doesn't depend upon us, does it? The Lord sends us out as sheep 
in a sheep into a fierce and ravenous pack of wolves, snapping and snarling. Now we can bring that sort of a picture to mind easily. And what is the, the ultimate result of a wolf that gets into a pack of sheep or a fold of sheep? That wolf will destroy it. But the Lord doesn't say that wolves will come among the sheep in this text, although they do, and he does speak of that elsewhere. No, the Lord says, I'm sending you, the sheep, into the pack of wolves. Now, anyone who's a sheep rancher would probably measure the lifespan of that sheep in minutes, if not seconds. But the Lord does that so that you and I will depend upon Him. Our strength does not come from within us. Our strength comes from Christ and the very word of God upon which we sin. The very word of God through which the Holy Spirit works in the hearts and lives of God's people. So when Jesus says, I am sending you out and don't be surprised when persecution comes, in whatever form it may take, it is for His name's sake. It is because you are associated with Christ and His cross. And the people of this world for whom Jesus has died oftentimes run to the darkness and hide. They hide amidst the immorality of life. They hide amidst the corrupted mental state and the fallen reason of this world. The things that make what is right wrong and those things that make what wrong is wrong right. And Christ comes into the darkness of this fallen world as the light to enlighten those who are sitting in darkness to say to them, I know that you are not perfect. And as much as you try, you will never be perfect, and you must stand in the day of reckoning between it before a holy and perfect God. But if you trust in me, and I will give you the ability to trust in me, I will stand between him and you. You can wear my righteousness. Because, you see, when you were lost, I came to find you. When you were hiding in the darkness, I sought you out. I lived the perfect life that you can never live. I lived it for you. I made the perfect sacrifice to God, which you can never make. I died on a cross for you to take away your sins. And when you had the uncertainty and the fear of death and the judgment to follow, I stood up from death for you. So that you, believing in me, need never die. That you will be with me forever. That is how much I love you. And that is how much my Father loves you. So when you go into this world as a sheep among wolves, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Remember my words when I was lifted up among you and returned to my Father? This is what I said. I will be with you always to the very end of the age. So when you're called to give a testimony in the checkout line at the grocery store, when you're called to speak of your faith to a friend and the desk next to you in class, when you're called before kings and rulers, 
When you stand in the court, tell them of my love. Be my witness. And don't be afraid. For I stand with you. I stand by your side. I die that you might live. And Satan and all the wiles of the evil one can never, ever destroy you. Because in me, you already have the victory. We are victorious in our Lord, Jesus Christ. So when we think of all the people of faith that have gone before us, Daniel, Paul, the people in the, in the world after the scripture, people like Martin Luther, or you or I, or parents and grandparents that have stood against the wiles of Satan, who have stood on the word, who have stood firm. Don't lose heart. But be joyful. Be confident. And know that Christ is with you. And he will be with you wherever it may take you until you receive the greatest blessing of all to be with him in the joy of his Father, which is your inheritance because of God's grace alone, through faith alone, in scripture alone, because of Christ of all. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this topic or any other, please contact us or join us Sunday mornings for worship at 9 o'clock in Bible class at 10 o'clock.